Now, the second and third species of evil um, have something in common. They're both a result of conscious decisions, free decisions in some sense, by human beings. And these evils, the second type, involve people inflicting various kinds of evils on each other. And the third type are people inflicting evils on themselves, although in there also um, are included various kinds of evils that people that cause wars and so forth. So that also, I think, is it, you know overlaps with people with with evil being inflicted um, on on by on them, on people by other people. Um, now, the Rambam says well, one thing to be pointed out here. He says a paradoxical thing on four forty four towards the bottom. He says that there aren't many of these kinds of evils when he's talking about the evils that men inflict upon each other, that people inflict upon each other. Um, and of course, there are many of these evils. So what does he mean by saying that there aren't many? He means that most people don't die that way. He means most people die of disease and old age and are not murdered. Um, and, uh, and he says, for instance, there are no cities where these evils of people killing each other are the, are the dominant mode because no such city would survive for very long. In other words, the Rambam's point here is that throughout human civilization, the vast majority of people were not murdered, right? Uh, and so being murdered is not the essential evil that we, that we need to address. Um, so he puts it in a somewhat paradoxical way, but I think his point is well taken. Um, but in general, we, he needs to deal with, with the nature of the second and third kinds of evils. Um, uh, what is it that, how is it possible that in a world constructed and run by a just God, um, there are all these terrible evils that are happening all the time, those people do to each other and those people do to themselves. Um, now, there are two fundamental uh, issues that are at stake here. One, the Rambam doesn't focus on, uh, and I think he doesn't focus on it because it reflects the same kind of consideration that I argued before, that we want to be embodied creatures. The Rambam is not so interested in what we want and what we don't want, um, and so he doesn't make the second argument, um, but I think it's somewhat implicit in his discussion and it's a more powerful answer to me. So I'm going to start with that one. And then I'm going to move on to what he explicitly says. And that second response to these, the second and third kinds of evils here, that second response is the one that will also move us towards the question of politics, economics, redemption, um, which we'll continue on with the next class. So the first thing that I think we can say about these kinds of evils um, is that the Rambam has already made it clear, as I mentioned before, I mean, it's actually a chapter, a few, a few chapters after this, that we can't expect God to do impossible things. So in the same way, I think that um, my commitment to sensual existence, in some sense, is also then a commitment to accepting suffering of sensual existence, right? In the same way, my commitment to freedom is also a commitment to the reality of people using their freedom to do evil, which is the second and third kinds of evil. That is to say, um, if I'm committed to human beings being free agents in the world, right? Now, freedom is a big problem, right? Nobody knows how to justify philosophically the concept of free will. Um, and yet we all know from our most basic experience of the world that we have free will, right? Um, which is another way of saying that what we call free will is this experience that we have of being free, experiencing ourselves free, to make choices about the world. Um, it may be that if I try to translate that experience into rational philosophic terms, I can't do it. And it may be that if I manage to translate that experience into rational philosophic terms, I can't justify it given a coherent picture of the material world. But so what, right? When I say free will, I mean this actual experience I have of being free. Um, and, 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 and like sensuality, I can't... Um, I can't imagine anything valuable or anything meaningful that didn't include human beings that share this experience that I have of what I call free will, right? Um, but if that's the case, then I, in a sense, I want free will. I demand from God free will. I don't want to be created without free will. I don't want to be a I don't want to be an angel. Two plus two equals four. That's an angel for Rambam, right? That's part of the angel of Ishim, right? Um, and I don't want to be a table. I want, to, I want to have sensual existence, and I want to feel the freedom that I feel. Well, if I want to feel that, 
right? Then that means that God simply can't come in and slam me and stop me every time I want to do something wrong. Um, and so in that sense, my commitment to freedom is a commitment to something that the flip side of it is that people will do evil, right? Or people will at least be free to do evil. And until the world is fully redeemed, there'll be evil going on. Uh, perhaps even then there'll be some evil going on. Um, so the structure of the argument here is that if I want sensuality and freedom, then I want a world that has suffering, death, and, 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 and choices made by human beings to inflict evil. And if I want God to prevent suffering and death and the possibility of evil, then I want God to take creation back from me, and I don't want God to take creation back from me. So the existence of, these, of the second and third kinds of evil, um, like the existence of the first kind of evil, does not contradict uh, ultimately coherent worldview where the world that we live in is the creation of a good God. What it does contradict is a kind of idea of omnipotence of God, of all-powerfulness of God, that God can do whatever he wants. He can make something wet and dry. He can make something that experiences pleasure but not pain. He can make something that has freedom but never makes evil choices, right? Th those possibilities are precluded by the reality of the first, second, and third kinds of evil in the world if we're to have a, a coherent picture of the world.